I just solo travelled around Thailand for 34 days straight and you, the lucky viewer, are about to witness everything that happened from the perspective of somebody on a budget with some interesting tips along the way. On the 14th of October 2022, I booked a flight. A one-way flight by myself to Southeast Asia. Little did I know how much this was about to change my life and after months of build-up, it was time to step foot on the plane. And the rest is history. <laughs> The adventure started in Bangkok, the chaotic capital of Thailand. I was very excited upon arrival and slightly nervous because I didn't know what to expect, but I remained calm. From the airport, I ventured over to my hostel and immediately I discovered public transport is very cheap as it only cost me 35 baht, which is 83p, to use a SkyTrain for a 30 kilometer trip. Now my hostel was the only thing I booked in advance just so I had the first three nights covered as a safety blanket. I'd highly recommend going in with an open plan because it allows you to be spontaneous and it also doesn't tie you down to any previous plans that you might change once you get there. Ultimately, I used Bangkok to settle into the new way of life, understand the value of their currency, and also make some content. For the most part, I was based around the Silom district near Lumphini Park, where I spent quite a lot of time catching fresh air and working out. It's quite cool to see outside gyms in Thailand. They're not the best of quality, but they're cheap and they get the job done. I'll tell you what, I really enjoyed that. Look at this man. Straight out of the park, right here beautiful city. And of course it would be rude not to attend the temple, so I went on a solo trip to visit the Grand Palace and the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, which, fun fact, is believed to bring good fortune to those who visit. Now I don't mean to foreshadow the end of this video, but I ended up in a police station a few weeks later, so that can't be true. Anyway, admission cost 500 baht, which I'd say is fairly good money for what you get. It's definitely more of a one-time thing, there's quite a lot of tourists and there's not really much of a reason to go back there, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. Somehow I ended up spending one week in Bangkok which is far too long. For anybody looking to travel Thailand, I'd recommend a maximum two to three days here, nothing more. You can spend your time much better elsewhere, believe me. If you're on a budget, use public transport to get around it. It's super cheap. That goes for everything, the SkyTrain, the Metro, buses and boats. I never paid over two pounds for any one of these trips around Bangkok using public transport. You can use the apps Grab and Bolt to get taxis because they are faster, but they're slightly more expensive. So it's down to you. Boy, this place is a vibe. There's everyone. Running around in the park, doing sports. It's just sick. It's literally in the centre of Bangkok. It's so lively here, there's music playing. If I have my gym gear on, I'll probably go join in with the football because. I have played in a long time and I love it. Another point is to be careful with the traffic. It is crazy on the road. I didn't even think to hire a moped in Bangkok because I don't have the confidence or the experience. And another point I'd make is to just keep your wits about you. 99% of the time you will be fine, but you have to watch out. Tuck tuck scams, lady boys, especially if you're like a decently tall lad and also random people sleeping in your bed. That was interesting to come back to in my hostel. So after a week in Bangkok, it was time to continue my solo voyage down south to the islands. I got a cheap night train down to Suat Fani. I think I pronounced that right. But anyway, the train wasn't the best. I didn't fit in the bed. People kept talking. The toilet situation was diabolical. However, I found it quite funny. And to be honest, there's no other option. And this was then followed up by a ferry over to my first island, Koh Samui. was I gas to see that crystal blue water after escaping the city life. I love the outdoors and embracing nature, so this change of scenery was immediately up my street. And before I continue, I'll be honest and say Koh Samui, Koh Penang, and Koh Tao are relatively similar, so a lot of these points will apply to every island. Upon arrival, I realised everyone uses bikes. Get one as soon as you can, it is not up for negotiation. They're easy to use, cheap, and so much fun, but still, you have to be careful as I did witness a couple of accidents. The average price for a day's hire is 250 baht which is really cheap but before you take them out I've got two big tips. Number one is take a video of your bike before you start using it because it's proof against them lying about any damages when you return it. Number two is to try not to hand in your passport or driving license as a form of deposit. Aim for cash instead. Sometimes however this just isn't avoidable and whenever I did have to hand my passport in I took a photo of the person holding it just so I had something against them. I rented out a bike throughout my stays on all three of these islands and I managed to get to some pretty amazing places. You'd either catch me at a waterfall, on the beach, chilling with friends, or drinking. Lots and lots of drinking. Jokes aside, here are some of the cool places which I think you'd be interested to see. No, the 
someone's coming up and I've jammed shut my f***ing scooter. I can't get into it. Five minutes later. Probably one of my favourite things to do, getting outside, exploring waterfalls and being one with nature. Cool. Adios, amazing waterfalls. It's time to go back. That was incredible. I went on a fair few adventures, but there's two in particular which are worth explaining. And number one is the Eden Party on Copenhagen. It's a hidden techno rave located along the coast. So after meeting a few friends in the hostel, we all decided to go. But the only way you could get there is by boat. Five hours later. You know that dodgy boat I got earlier? Yeah. And I've got to catch that again. It's somewhere over there. Well, I'm gonna be real. I've not got an absolute clue how I've ended up here. It's 20 to six in the morning. I'm trying to find this random boat to take me back to Copenhagen. Well, the part I need to be on Copenhagen. And I'm just, <laughs> I think I've gone a bit off track. I eventually made it back in one piece just to have two hours sleep as I was traveling over to Koh Tao the next day. And this place is amazing. I met some great people at hostels, had a few more drinks and spent the majority of my time exploring the island. Now the second trip I want to mention is the snorkeling tour. For 500 baht, which is the same price as the temples, you get taken to spots around the island, lunch is included, and the overall value is too good to miss out on.
total, I spent seven nights in Koh Samui, three nights in Koh Phangan, and another seven nights in Koh Tao, and this was entirely determined by my personal experience. If you're worried about making friends and meeting people, don't, because it is so easy. Hostels are 100% the best route, and I found it 100 times easier to do it on the islands, because everyone's a lot happier and more chilled out. But anyway, with the right side of the south ticked off, it was time to venture over to the left. Next up was Krabby, and I travelled there with a German girl that I met in Koh Tao. We decided to take the night ferry, followed up by a transfer at the other side, which was the cheapest option, and it's not as rough as everyone says it is. After checking into another hostel for the next two nights in Krabby, we were quick to get out and explore once again. I can't remember the exact cost of hiring these kayaks, but for two hours of exploration along the Ao Nang coast, it was definitely worth the money. This was also where I encountered my first batch of wild monkeys. They are very unpredictable, and if you don't have a rabies jab like I didn't, then keep a bit of distance. Now, second to last of the locations in my trip is a place that needs no introduction, and that is Kopeep. More monkeys, more viewpoints, more beaches, and plenty more great experiences later, I can safely say that Kobe B is beautiful. There aren't actually any roads on the island because it's so small, everything is within walking distance. Prices were high here compared to the rest of Thailand, but I can only assume it's due to the cost of importing overseas, so we had to spend more money at shops and at restaurants. And for the accommodation, <laughs> where do I start with this? The cheapest hostel was far from luxury. It was only like eight to nine pounds a night, which is cheap, but we spent no time in here because we wanted to make the most of the scenery. Everything was going brilliantly until one night things very quickly took a turn. My phone was stolen. The dream had turned to a nightmare and it made me rethink my entire situation. Two days after the incident, I booked a flight home and this was definitely not planned, but I still had a few days left and with some freshly withdrawn cash in my right pocket and a fully charged GoPro in my left, it was time to end Thailand with a bang. Thirty-three chaotic nights and thirty-four jam-packed days later, I am home, and I can safely say that this was the best thing that I have ever done. Obviously, I didn't plan for it to go this way, but after gaining a new perspective on life, the traveling saga is far from over. Subscribe if you enjoyed. Take care and go live it up.